Hello my good friends, this is Buck WSR Weezer and I'm coming at you today with a Mustang repair project. This is the 1996 Mustang Coupe with the gigantic 3.8 liter V6 engine. And the purpose of today's project is to fix the parking brake. Yes, the parking brake. Doesn't that sound exciting? I've had this car for almost three years and I have not bothered to fix the parking brake because I thought, why? But I'll tell you why. Because my son needs to take his road test to get his driver's license. And it is required that there be a handbrake that the tester seated right here in the passenger seat is able to access. But I know what's going to happen. He's going to, the tester is going to sit down here in the passenger seat and he's going to go like this. He's going to realize, holy cow, there's no resistance there. This thing's not working. This is not going to break at all. And of course, then the test will be over. We will have failed and my son will not have his driver's license. So this is all about my son and his driver's license. All right, so I don't know exactly what the problem is. I do know that I've done rear brakes on this car not that long ago and at that time all of the spring-loaded uh, emergency parking brake uh, components were in good shape. So there's something somewhere, maybe it's a cable or somewhere between, between the uh, hand lever and the wheels that's not working and we got to resolve it. So I think my first step is going to be to open up, remove the console and take a better look at the lever, make sure the cable there is connected or maybe we'll be able to see what's going on once we open it up. I'm not even sure how to get this apart. I'm gonna make it up as I go, but I guess it starts by removing my cassettes. I love this car because it has a cassette player. I'm old school baby and I got a lot of cassettes from the 80s. That's my era. All right, so that was the easy part. Now I gotta figure out how this comes out. You know, I've got the manual. Ashtray. I've got the uh, manual somewhere. That might be a value. This guy can come out. Okay, so according to the manual, with this open, there's two rubber bumpers here that get removed. Well, actually, one is already missing. And there's supposed to be two screws under there that hold this down. Those screws are not, in fact, present. So I guess someone's been here before. I guess that's not too unusual in a 23-year-old vehicle. And then this comes out, like so. Okay. We're going to next undo a couple of screws at the front. Right here and right here. This is, uh, these are T20 Torx bit. Also looks like it might be an eight millimeter. Not driver socket if you had that. So there's one guy. Boy, now that's not doing much because the plastic's broken. But that's the second screw. Now, there could be two more. I just haven't figured out where they are yet. Oh, there's two down here. These would come out. And they look to be the same Torx bit. And 
There's two. All right. Now we should be able to remove this this wire. Unclips there. It's for the cigarette lighter. All right. Now hold on, and we will try to uh, pull this out of here. Uh huh. Couple of wires to unplug underneath for these uh, fog lamps. What's this wire to? It's already unplugged. Maybe it's for a feature that my car doesn't have. All right, I gotta peek down here to get that. Okay, unplug that. All right, now I might have to take this out of park. Move the shift lever down. So to do that, I'm gonna need to scrounge up the keys. I'll be right back, people. Okay, it's coming out. Now we got the center console out, and now we'll have some. Now we'll have some room to uh, work on this cable down here a little bit. Oh, kind of interesting. Somebody has. Hot wired in some uh, cigarette lighter type connectors. I never noticed this before. So, someone's been here before. Here's a ground wire that's been cut off. Yeah, I just never even noticed this before. Where are they picking up their ground? I guess it's bolted here to the frame. And they grabbed a hot from here. What was this for? I don't really know. Eh, it doesn't really matter. Everything was working that it needs to. All right, so I can see that the Cable. Well, is well, I'm not even sure now. It actually does seem to be connected there. For whatever reason, this doesn't seem to be turning to tighten the cable. So this moves up, but this this wheel here doesn't turn for whatever reason. And it seems to me. And as I pull up on this lever, this wheel so should turn. Down. It's connected down here, but it doesn't move at all when we pull up the lever. All right, I'm gonna take a little closer look at the manual and see what I can figure out. All right, I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing. By inserting a bolt through here, or steel pin as they say in the manual, I was able to release the tension on the cable and I have removed the cable from the pulley here that it spins on. And I wanna, I crawled under the car, got it up on ramps right now. And I didn't actually see anything amiss under there, except maybe the possibility that those two cables that each go to each of the rear wheels, maybe are just frozen, locked up. I'm just going to see if I can grab this with a pair of vice grips. And I can't pull that at all by myself.
which makes me believe, I mean, it should be stiff, but I should be able to get a little bit of movement out of there, which leads me to believe that probably what we're dealing with is uh, those two cables that go to the rear wheels are frozen and not really, uh, cables not sliding inside the channel. I'm going to take a look underneath and see if I can make them move, grab them and make them move from down there. All right. I was about to give up when I think I possibly might have just fixed it. By looking closely at this mechanism, I began to realize that this wheel onto which the cable is affixed is the same as this wheel right here with these teeth in it. And what is the component that engages these teeth with the end of this guy right there at the tip of my screwdriver? And this guy was, this, this little tooth was not engaging any of these other teeth. So I wedged a screwdriver in there like so and pulled up on the, on the handle and suddenly this this tooth began to engage here so now I pull up it, it engages and I feel resistance so the cable is definitely pulling tight down there and then it releases a little bit so there it's up now I will admit that the resistance is felt very early on up like that and then resistance is it engaging the brake? I'll have to put it back together and take it out for a ride. Um, but I'm pretty sure, like, at least now, when you pull up on the handle, that tooth is engaging the gear, you know, the teeth here, to turn and tighten that, that cable. So at least it's feeling like a parking grip brake is supposed to feel. Maybe actually a little stiffer than most. Alright, so let's put it back together and then we'll uh, we'll give it a test. Okay, well we got the parking brake operating but I came to realize that it was not working correctly. It was not releasing. So this side would be locked up and wouldn't release. This side, I'm not even sure if the parking brake was uh, in engaging or, or uh, getting tight at all. And so I thought, well, it's either the mechanism here at each wheel or it's the parking brake cables. So I went ahead and took off the parking brake cables and I'm going to replace them. You can take a look here see how they are very much chewed up um, even here this 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 one right here is completely broken so they're rusted out broken and the cable doesn't doesn't slide back and forth inside the channel at all it's just these are just really really bad Fortunately, they're not that expensive to replace. I'm going to run out now and get the new ones, aftermarket items. Costing me about 40 bucks, 43 bucks with tax for the parking brake cable on the driver's side and the passenger side. We're going to replace that. I think that's going to solve our problem here. I do not, uh, it's, they were hard to get out, I'm not going to lie. But even harder would have been to try to film it. So I'm not going to show you that. But you can see by looking at these cables that they're they're beat. And we're gonna we're gonna change them out. And I think that's going to be the uh, solution to our parking brake dilemma. So I'll just walk you through the process of removing the old cables, starting here at the parking brake lever. With the brake fully pulled, with the handle pulled up, there's a way to insert a pin, which is this guy right here. You can see I inserted a nail right there. And then 
push the put the uh, handle back down and it relieves the tension on the string the cable that runs across the bottom here and under the car after that I crawl under the car and above the drive shaft disconnect from the disconnect that the two cables that go to either side disconnect them from the bracket that's under there then I come and disconnect each cable from the, the brake mechanism at each wheel finally I went under the car again and removed the old cables you got to fish them around a little bit they, they bolt down with a bracket at one point and now to install the new ones, which I have right here. Aftermarket, door last. Brake cables that I just bought. Just gonna do the reverse of what I did. I'm gonna fish the cables into place. Then I'm gonna connect them at each of the rear wheels. Then I will connect them to that bracket above the drive, the drive shaft under the car. And finally, I'll pull up that handle and remove that pin and put tension again on the cable and I think that's what it's going to take to replace these cables. Um, I'm going to take care of that and then I'll uh, bring you back to show you how it works and if we've solved our problem. Okay so we're inside the vehicle and I put it back together so there's a view of the handbrake, the parking brake. I am Buck WSR Weezer. I learned a little bit about the parking brake system on the 96 Ford Mustang. Hopefully that was of value to you in some small way. Appreciate your comments or questions. And I thank you for watching. Bye-bye.